Hi everybody. Here's a little video tutorial on how to do the quiz about adding vectors. So the first step is to read the problem carefully. Vector A has a magnitude of 12 meters and points at an angle of 54 degrees relative to the x-axis. So that's going to look kind of like this. And here is a 54 degree angle. And this is going to be 12 meters long. And this is vector A. And the second step is going to be to take the second vector and draw that. Vector B has a magnitude of 23 meters and points at an angle of 120 degrees relative to the positive x-axis. That means it's going to stick off in a direction kind of like this, and it's going to be a bit longer. So here's vector B, and it has a length of 23, and it has an angle of 120 if you measure it from the x-axis. So you can either leave it like that, or you might note that this angle is 60 degrees. So the next step is to take your vectors and break them down into components. And so my diagram is going to get kind of messy here, so please bear with me. So the x component of vector A, which is this right here, we're turning this into a right triangle, AX is going to be equal to 12 times the cosine of 54, and same thing with AY. We're going to do the same thing with BX and BY. So here's BX. Notice it points to the left, so we're anticipating that this should have a negative value. And if you look at the XY coordinates there, it certainly does. And here is BY. BY should have a positive number for the Y coordinate. So let's go over here and actually write out some numbers. Here's how I like to set up my my math when I'm doing these um, adding vectors. So vector A has an X component and that's equal to 12 sine 54 and or sorry the X component is the 12 times the cosine of 54 and that's in the I direction and the Y component is 12 times the sine of 54. And if you do out the math, um, you, you can find those numbers. And then I'll just do vector B here. Vector B is going to be 23 times the cosine. And you might sit there going, uh-oh, is it 120 or 60? Put it in your calculator. The cosine of 120 and the cosine of 60 is the same thing. I'll just put 120 here just because it makes it, everything look nice and consistent. But it should work either way. And this is 23 times the sine of 120 degrees, and that's in the J direction. And I forgot this J over here, too. Okay, next step. Next step is actually plugging numbers into your calculator. Um, I'm going to just do the extra step of writing out the actual numbers that 12 cosine of 54 comes out to, 12 sine of 54, and all that stuff. So 12 cosine of 54 comes out to be 7.053. I'm keeping four digits here, the 7, 0, 5, and 3, because in the problem, it gives me three significant digits. 12.0 is one, two, three significant digits. That zero means you actually measured it, and you should keep it in the problem, because throwing it away is throwing away perfectly nice information and perfectly accurate information. Same thing with the zero here. Same thing with both of these zeros on the 120 and the 23. I saw an awful lot of people get real sloppy here and just round this off to seven and then um, and then round this one, 12 sine of 54, that comes out to be 9.7.708. And I saw a lot of people just round that to 10. When you round so sloppily like that, round off like just to two digits or something, 
the only thing that gets you is a guaranteed wrong answer in the end. So please be really careful about that. You don't need to keep like, you know, seven digits here or something, but if the answer or if the question gives you three significant digits, then by all means hang on to four throughout the problem until your very last step, that's when you round. Let's keep going here. B comes out to be the X component is negative 11.50 in the I direction and a 19.92 in the J direction. If you are getting different numbers here, even though you had the 12 sine 54 and 23 sine 120, if those numbers don't correspond to this, that's because your calculator is in radians instead of degrees. And that's another thing. Don't let goofy things like that trip you up and get you a wrong answer. So the very final step, or almost the final step here, is to find the components in the x and the y direction for our vector c, which means add these up. And very, very common error that I saw was that people had a positive number here. And that was grounds to repeat the whole entire proficiency quiz, because that is really important. Sign errors are not little goofy mistakes. Sign errors are deal breakers. So this comes out to be negative 4.447. Seven in the i direction or the x direction, and this is added to 29.63 in the j direction. Okay, so just take a moment and check to make sure that you understand how these numbers um, came to be, and then in the second part of this tutorial, I'll show you what you actually do with this because you're not done yet. This tells you the x and y coordinates of our vector c, but it doesn't tell us the magnitude and direction just yet. Okay, so to give myself some room, I'm going to clear off what I've drawn, and we're going to start all over again. I've got vector a here, looks something like that, and I've got vector b going off in this direction, a little bit longer than A. And so what we have to do is to add those together. And when you add vectors together, what you're doing is, like if you just want to do it graphically, what you would do is pick up this vector, vector A, and you have to add them tip to tail. So I would pick this up, and I would if I could figure out how to do that, pick this up and put it here. So, or putting this vector over here. So if we just take this vector and translate it over here, then it would look like this. And so we're anticipating that our resultant vector kind of points straight up, maybe off to the side a little bit. Sorry about my less than artistic drawing here. So the, um, but we're kind of anticipating something that sort of points straight up. If you wound up with a vector that points down here and you would know that based on the x and the y components that you just got in the previous step. If that gives you x, y coordinates pointing down here somewhere or over here, you know that something went wrong. So we're anticipating a vector that kind of points up. We don't know if it's exactly 90 or a little bit more or a little bit less than 90, but it should come. Okay, so how do we actually get that? Um, so we get that by looking at the numbers that we got, we got a CX um, of, I'm going to clear this off a little bit here again. So let me just quickly draw my, my vectors on there again. So here's A and here's B. And our vector C, which I'm going to try to draw in green here, has components of negative Four point four seven, or maybe four point four four seven, and the y component was equal to positive twenty nine point six three. So that looks to me like negative about negative four this way, and positive twenty nine this way. So it looks like it points somewhere up here like this. 
Okay, and that kind of looks like that one that I just kind of sketched out from adding the vectors graphically, meaning tip to tail, moving this guy here. It kind of points in the right direction. You can see it doesn't really make a huge difference if it's exactly right or not. So let's actually do out the map. I'm going to draw this over here. So this is what our vector looks like. Here's vector C. I'm just drawing off to the side so you can see what's going on. Um, we're going to turn this into the right triangle. Okay, here's your right triangle. Here's CX, which is the negative 4.47. So here's your origin. This is negative 4.47. This is CY, positive 29.63. You get the angle, this angle, from the tangent. So the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, 29.63, divided by the adjacent, 4.447. You could put a minus sign in there, but on this step, I just want you to be really careful because tangents, um, more than one angle has the same tangent. And so what I like to do is I just like to put in the positive numbers here and find out just what this angle is. And then we can figure out what it is relative to the x-axis. So that theta there I found to be 81.46 degrees. What I really want is the angle relative to the positive x-axis. So that would be 180 minus that. So the angle a vector c relative to the positive x-axis is going to be 180 minus that. And 180 minus 81.46 is equal to 98.54. Here's where you can round it off. If you want to round this off to 98.5 degrees relative to the x-axis, that's your final answer and you're good to go and that's perfectly acceptable to do that. So that is your answer for the angle relative to the x-axis. All right, but we're not done yet. We still have to find out the length of C. And how do you do that? Pythagorean theorem. Square this, square that, add them together, take the square root of it, and it gives you that. So I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to write it like this. So 4.447 squared plus 29.63 squared is equal to c squared. And when you solve for it, you find that c is equal to 30.0. It's actually 29.95 or something, but rounding properly is 30.0 meters. And that is your answer for the second part of that question. Actually, that was the first part of the question. So common mistakes that I saw was sloppy round off, taking these numbers, putting in something like 4.4. Rounding off like that is guaranteed to get you the wrong answer. So don't do it until the very last step. You don't have to keep, you know, 15 decimal places here. If the, if the question gives you three significant digits or four, and keep four or five throughout your question um, until you get to the very last step. The quiz was, um, there were a couple of different problems that everybody got. There were variations in whether it was 12 or 15 or 17, and then here, same thing, whether it was 54 or, um, you know, whatever the value was for that. So, all right, well, hopefully that was a good tutorial, and... Let's get it right on Wednesday.